Hello, my name is James Drake. Today I'm gonna to help you do your best on the ACFT. I was very fortunate to have an opportunity to train here at Fort Jackson for a few weeks to get ready for the ACFT. And some of the tips that help me max out in every category, I'm gonna share with you today so that you can do your best. We're gonna go in order, so hang with me. I'm gonna move fast, but these things can make a big Audio. difference. Okay, so your first lift is gonna be your three rep max deadlift in a hex bar like this. Here's the biggest trick. If you don't learn anything else, learn this. So when you're maxing this thing out, the first thing to give is not gonna be your quads, it's gonna be your forearms. So to prevent that from happening, and having the bar rock back and forth on you, which will give you a no rep, and you'll have to bump down to a lighter weight. What I found helps is I do a switch grip. So I put my pinky on the middle here, which you'll find by the tape, and then I put my forefinger on the other one. So can you see how my right hand is forward and my left hand is back? and then I split the bar directly over the top of my foot. And this technique right here has made all the difference to keep that bar stable because it's not going forward or back. If it goes forward, I pull back with my front arm. If it goes back, I lean in with my back arm. This is a game changer when it comes to max time. Go. All right, second tip on the three rep of max deadlift. If you have any sort of lower back injury or you just want to prevent it from ever having lower back injuries, listen up. If you step in here, the first thing you need to do is breathe out, tighten everything down. Tighten your glutes, your quads, your core, all right? Everything is tight. Even my arms are tight. I come down here, I'm looking forward, and when I stand, everything's tight. Right now, my core's tight, my glutes are tight, nothing is loose. When I go down, it's the same thing. Now, what I find a lot of people doing is they get kind of loosey-goosey in here. They're gonna look down, their hips are gonna drive up first, and they're asking for trouble with that lower back. So, again, switch grip, tight core, looking straight ahead, stand tall. If you do that, you're gonna crush things. All right. So, now we're gonna move on to the standing ball toss. Uh, the three rep max deadlift, it's just determining your raw strength. This is looking at your power. So this is a powerful movement and that's all we're gonna focus on is power. What helps me is I take one foot forward, so one step forward from the line. I am getting right here in like a jumping position. So pretend you're about to like jump up and touch up as high as you possibly can. So that's as low as you're gonna go. I see a lot of people doing this, getting all the way down here, trying to get more of a range of motion. None of them have thrown that well in my observation. Everybody's different, so it might work for that one guy. But for most of you, you just wanna get right here. This is your power position. And then your power's gonna be generated right here from your hips. I move my hands here. My hands are cupped underneath the ball. I am standing up, up. I'm looking back, and I'm letting it go. I want the trajectory to kind of go it up. 45 degree angle, I find that works best. And I release, and then when I land, I'm focused right here in front of me until I catch my balance, and then I look back. I see a lot of people growing and then looking, and then they're already off balance. So, here's what it's gonna look like when you put it all together. to test number three now of physical fitness. This is the hand release push-ups. And what this is testing is your upper body endurance. So let me show you some things that really help. First, your hands have to be right underneath your shoulders. So when they come down, they should be right here. You're actually gonna start in this position here. Your first movement is going to be to fire up. Now what I want you to be careful to not do is don't peel off the ground and don't kind of wiggle it, like everything's tight. So it's just one solid movement and that's how you get a good rep. Then when you come down, do not control yourself coming down. Don't waste this energy, just drop. And then when you put your arms out, I see some people will keep their arms floating. I don't recommend that. Flop them out, pull them back in, fire up, drop, flop, repeat for two minutes. Now, if you get tired, as long as you're moving, they can't stop the clock on you. So you can literally go this slow 
and get a few more reps. For those of you that want to get like a ton of reps and keep your pace up, I recommend a head bob. I know this looks weird, but it helped me keep my pace. So anyways, I hope that helps you crush the hand release push-ups. All right, I just forgot. This is really important on the push-ups. When you get tired right here, so this is pretty much the standard position. My elbows are next to my side. Again, I taught you how to explode off the ground, stay locked out, dropping down, dropping your arms. Now, when you bring your arms in, if you're getting tired, try shifting your hands. Did you see that? I'm shifting my hands. They're still under my shoulder, but now I'm incorporating my lats into the movement. Or come in and really squeeze your side. Now you're working the inside pecs. And you'll find that just by moving your hands a little bit, you can incorporate some different muscle groups and that'll help you get a few more reps as well. All right. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the sprint drag carry. This is gonna test your anaerobic and your aerobic systems. It's gonna be a cardio burner. All right, so first thing is up is you're gonna sprint. Now, I just, you gotta be down on the ground, so I'll go ahead and show you. This is the setup that I like, by the way. I like having my sled here, my kettlebells here, and then I line up between them, and I'll show you why. Your head's gotta be behind the line, so right about here, on the count of three, two, one. I pop up, first step right here into a shuttle sprint, and then I'm gone. All right, so that's part one. Let's pretend this line is down there. I'm running down, and I step over. That's all you have to do. I turn my feet, I touch the line, and I come back. And that is the most efficient way to do that movement. Now, once you've sprinted down, sprinted back, you're gonna begin the drag part. I go 80% on this. Now you're saying, why would you go 100%? Go 100% on this, it's going to adversely affect your next three shuttles. This takes so much strength. To Lean back, don't find yourself like this. I see a lot of people trying to pull the sled like this. Lean back, let gravity help you. Keep those arms locked out and push. You never want to be comfortable. Now, once you get down to the end, you're going to step over the line, pull the sled, and come back. And I'll show you what that looks like down here. And I stay on this line so I don't waste any energy. So here I am, I'm gonna step, pull, and it's across. That sled has to be all the way across before you can begin your next part, which is your side laterals. Now on your side laterals, I like to swing my arms like this. Some people will swing like this. It's just a matter of preference. Be careful not to bomb up and down. But I get right here like you're a basketball player about to guard somebody, and I'm just here shuffling through. I find that my lead leg is usually about an inch forward. I don't know why. And when I go back this way, my left leg takes. So I don't know why that is. You just want to be careful not to have your feet touch or cross. If they cross at any point, you're out. So you're down here, just moving as fast as you can. The second you get here, if you like my setup, it's just a simple touch, swing, and go. Kettlebells. When you get down there, I stay on the outside of the lane, so that all I have to do is touch my foot to the line and then make my way back. So let's pretend this is the line at the end. So I'm coming here, outside of the lane. I literally just touch my foot. That's all you have to do. And, uh, all right. So once I come back, you have to put them down. You can't throw them down. You have to set them down. Then we're going in for our final sprint. I'm going down, down, down. The line just like last time. I'm coming back. When I come through here, I'm throwing my chest at the very end. And what that does is it just triggers where the person keeping the time, it's time to stop because they're going to see that explosive movement. So you're here, boom, and they're going to stop that watch. You're going to need at least four or five minutes to catch your breath after this. This to me is the hardest part of the ACFT. I hope those tips help you crush it. Okay, at this point in the ACFT, you're going onto the plank. You're smoked right now. You might think, I can do a plank, no problem. Well, try doing it after four consecutive max effort lifts, sprints, pulls. You're gonna be smoked. So, first thing I want you to think about is breath control. If 
you've never done diaphragm breathing, look that up. You really want to learn how to do some diaphragm breathing so you can drive that heart rate down. That's going to be key, first and foremost. Secondly, a lot of people will either sag or they'll bridge. Neither one of those is acceptable. They'll give you a warning and then they will cancel it. So what you want to do is maintain a perfect flat posture. So I control my breathing. I come down here. I get my arms. Uh, it has to be a fit fist apart. So you can't be touching, you can't be interlocked. It has to be apart. And then I just get where it's comfortable here. Some people like it here, some people like it out here. It's really just a matter of preference. And then I step back. Your heels need to be touching or close together. If they find your feet drifting like this, they'll give you a warning and they'll stop it as well. So everything is tight, but my breathing is relaxed. Diaphragm breathing here. Now, I'm getting a little tired. Mentally, I'm getting bored. What do I do? Well, when I'm mentally bored, I like to quote scripture. So. Find something you like, a song you like, a scripture you like, something, and just start reciting it in your head. It'll take your mind off of the pain. Secondly, if it gets like, I can't last, I'm gonna go down, just try shifting a little bit to the right. Then try shifting a little bit to the left. Then shift a little bit forward. Then shift a little bit back. And next thing you know, you're gonna get an additional 20 seconds to a minute just from these small variations, which are perfectly within the limits of what you're allowed to do. So, I hope those three tips help you crush the plank as well. Good. All right, you finished all of those exercises. You've got the deadlift under your belt. You've finished the standing ball toss. You've done the hand release push-ups. You've done the sprint drag carry. You've done your max effort plank. Five exercises down, one more to go. It's time to run two miles. Listen, this is the most important thing for the run. Hydration, hydration, hydration. You've got to be hydrated. So how do you hydrate? Yes, you should be drinking water throughout the ACFT, but before you even begin, you need to get electrolytes in your system. So if you don't have access to electrolytes, put some salt in your water, put some honey in your water, put some lemon, lime, whatever you can do to increase the glucose and the mineral content, that's really gonna help you be hydrated in the morning. So I start doing that the night before and before I even step out there for ACFT. Point number two on your run, you wanna glide, not bob. What do I mean by that? A lot of people when they run, man, they're just bobbing all over the place. What you want to do is you want to glide. All that energy needs to be going into your forward momentum, not vertical. You want to focus on the horizontal. So, so we think, I like to think, this is crazy, but I like to pretend like those African women carrying all that fruit on their head, you know? Uh, I'm trying to do that myself. I'm trying to stay nice and smooth, like I got a bowl of fruit on my head. And that helps me stay super efficient. Also, you want to hug those turns. So you're likely going to be running in a circle or you'll turn left at some point. So that left arm's just going to stay in, that right arm will come across the body and you're just going to kind of lean into it a little bit. You really want to stay efficient and not waste any inches out there on the course. Last but not least is your foot strike. Uh, whatever technique you run with is fine, but I want you to think about this. You really want to keep the RPMs high for this two mile run. You're never going to be comfortable you're gonna be moving fast. So when you're going uphill, you really wanna lean in and drive. When you're going downhill, you can lean back a little bit and let maybe more of your heel strike, but that's the only time your heel is gonna be striking. Beyond that, you're gonna take basically a medium-sized step, striking the ball with the foot on the ground, leaning forward, and these arms are just driving forward and back. Try and cut it out if you're doing like the Popeye run or something like that, or the Kung Fu Panda, don't do that. Keep them going forward and back at all times. And again, with all these tips, I hope it helps you crush your two mile run on the ACFT. All right, so that is the ACFT in a nutshell. Those are the tips and tricks that really helped me do well, and I hope they help you as well. You know, the ACFT is here to stay. It is going to be the new standard for measuring fitness in the military. And yes, they're gonna change some things and the metrics of what is passing or not passing is gonna change based on a lot of different variables moving forward. But this general approach to fitness is going to remain. So, if you're a powerful athlete, you're probably gonna to have to work on your speed. If you got great strength, you're probably gonna to have to work on your power. You see, between speed, power, and strength, you're gonna have a weakness, and that's why I would encourage you to focus. A lot of people, when they go to the gym, they just do what they love to do and what they're good at. 
but this sort of test is going to exploit your weakness. Now what we want to do is we want to keep you strong where you already have natural propensities, but work on those weaknesses so that you can become not maybe not the best, but your best. And uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe, leave some comments below. I will answer them. And uh, let me know what you want to see next time. Thanks so much.